And just like that, the Raspberry Pi Foundation surprises us with a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B in the year 2019. Um, so a little over a year over the last upgrade, but the last upgrade, and a lot of you might be with me, was not as big as this one. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna give you a side-by-side -side comparison, tell you a little bit about the Raspberry Pi 4, what's good, what's bad, what are the differences, and what does this actually mean? Like, what can you actually use this for? And um, absolutely, just right off the chase, Raspberry Pi continues to make this board specifically for people who like to tinker, people who like to program. So for you gamers out there, it's not gonna be the biggest revolution, but um, there are going to be some pros to this and some, um, you know, some, something that will be beneficial to you. So stay tuned. Let's check this out. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see the two pictures here. We have the new Raspberry Pi 4B on the left and then the 4 on the right. Uh, First, you might notice at the top of the unit, the Wi-Fi has been upgraded. Now you no longer have that Pi Edge there. You have the Wi-Fi there. You see that the Ethernet port has been switched with the USB ports. They have missed. So what does that mean? No more Raspberry Pi 3B cases. You will have to throw out your cases or keep your cases for your old Model 3s um, because the 4 is going to require a different case. And also, look over here on the bottom of the board. The HDMI is now mini HDMI and the power is now a USB Type-C. Um, you'll notice though the camera port and the display ports are still there on the board and you will notice a new processor among some other things but power over ethernet is still there, GPIO are still there, the mounting points are still the same, so some similarities. The other thing, I don't know if you see that, but look, there's a little blue in there. Yes, USB 3.0 finally. So for those of you that want to put external hard drives and USB storage on your Raspberry Pis, much faster transfer seeds, much faster uh, data transfer there, which is to me one of the bigger uh, pros to this um, so let's go ahead and look at the specs here so yes we do have an upgrade on the processor not that amazing so i'll just let the horse out of the bag here i mean you could get an odroid right now that'll still blow this thing out of the water as far as performance is so you know don't get too excited about that the raspberry pi is still limiting on that but just like my last video, you really do need to um, think about that the Raspberry Pi, the reason why it's so popular is A, it's got a great community around it, and B, it's so dang cheap. Anybody can get their hands on it at $35. That's really, really cheap. The Odroid can run you around $80 or so in that price range. Um, so this is still a super affordable computer. And um, I like the point in this next article um, that I was reading, which is like, they're like, you could probably manage with a Raspberry Pi 4B as your main computer as long as you're not a videographer or heavy duty user. Now, most of you watching this video are gonna be like, what the heck? But there's some truth to that. Like you could use the Raspberry Pi 4 now as a media center, you know, just to stream movies, or if you're just browsing the internet, you know, it might actually be good for, or Netflix, you know, it could totally do that, especially now that it's up to 4K uh, output. By the way, it is up to, a lot of people are saying they don't know what the bit rate is or the frame rate. It is up to 60 uh, frames per second on the 4K output, up to. That doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna do that, but it has the the potential for that. I've noticed some other videos I watched where they didn't say whether it'd be 30 or 60. They're claiming 60 on that. Okay, let's move down the list here. So 0.1 gigahertz faster. We'll see what that actually means for emulation. It's not gonna be a huge difference. Maybe we might get a little more Dreamcast performance. We might get a little bit uh, better PSP performance. Uh, but then the RAM is gonna help a ton. We're gonna go from DDR2 to DDR4 speeds. And you can get in one gigabyte, two gigabyte, or four gigabyte. And this is how the pricing is gonna go. It's gonna go $35, $45, $55 for the four gigabyte. Still gonna run micro SD cards. Um, you know, Raspberry Pi Foundation always says like, oh, we don't support anything over 128 gigabytes. It's kind of just what they're trying to cover their butts. You could put a, a one terabyte S, uh, micro SD card in there if you wanted. That's how big we're, we're at right now. I've run 400 gigabyte SD cards, it's totally fine. Okay, so let's move down this list here. So upgraded Bluetooth, um, which is great. Gigabit Ethernet amazing so now a lot of you with fiber optic lines can actually get the full potential out of it faster data speeds over when you're transferring things over the network so that's a big improvement there um, the two HDMI ports I don't know who's gonna be running dual displays on this thing the other thing I don't like is like now we have to run an adapter because you have to go micro to normal sized HDMI I hope they include that in the box 
I mean, it's a cheap adapter, but it's just more dongles and things. Like, it reminds me of Apple products. You know, every time you buy an Apple product, you got a god dang dongle to deal with. You know, whether you want to charge it, whether you want to use auxiliary, it's, it's crazy. Um, so moving down on the list, awesome stuff so far. USB 3.0, finally. As I mentioned, though, Odroids always kind of had that. So I have the GPIO headers. So this is kind of cool for you gamers out there, is that now we can get up to 3 amps, get some more juice to this thing. So those of you that have the lightning uh, bolt in your upper right hand corner because you have low voltage on your Raspberry Pis. This new Raspberry Pi may fix that. You may have better power management, more power going to the Pi. Thus, you can run LED lights, fans, things like that that do take a little bit of juice without running uh, additional power. So there's one dongle less. Um, but then again, this kind of sucks because now you need, you know, for me, for example, I have a bunch of these five volt USB chargers around. Now, um, you know, I guess what you could do is you can, by the way, if you didn't know this, you can get a micro USB to type C adapter and they're really cheap. They're like $2. So you can actually still use that. You're just going to need an adapter. Um, now this is really cool for all you gamers out there, especially with all the images out there. It is still Raspbian. So this should be backwards compatible. So if you have an image and you're running it on the Raspberry Pi 3B plus, you can just go ahead and plug it into your 4B and it's going to work so that is great that is really really great for a lot of you where that wasn't the case when the b plus came out you had to upgrade the os so that is really cool and then lastly i mean i gotta give them the give them a round of applause on this like keeping it at 35 dollars. i mean i know technology gets cheaper and cheaper but this is a quite a few upgrades to keep the price the same. Um, even if you don't take out the RAM, you're still getting the new power, the dual display, the better USB, the better processor. So um, I guess, you know, it's not that impressive, but when you get to the $45, you know, 55, that's a lot of RAM, and there's not a lot of single board computers that'll give you that much RAM for that uh, price. So in summary, um, goods and bads i'm definitely going to pick one up i'll put links in the description of where you can get them i don't think you can get them on amazon yet we can get them some other places but you will be soon maybe a day or two after this video comes out um and it's you know just to keep the legacy alive i just i just see this you know it's just going to reinvigorate the raspberry pi community even more and a lot of image creators are going to be like oh yeah we need to now try this and do some testing um and then you know with the dual you know hdmi and all this other stuff you're gonna people are gonna be using these more um for example the nvidia shield you know the reason why the nvidia shield is so popular it's a little bit more powerful raspberry pi it's android based and so this now the pi is punching it back and saying well hey you might want to use this as your media center you know so we're going to have some great applications for it, a um, lot more aftermarket things for it. Now, now uh, RetroFlag has to, you know, make a new case for all their, for the, for the NES case, the SNES case, the, the Sega Mini cases are all going to have to change. So it's going to disrupt everything just a little bit. Um, and with this disruption, think about this. Think about this. Just don't forget this fact that as this 4 comes out, all these companies, these aftermarket companies are going to want to get rid of their 3B pluses. Not all of them. I mean, sure, they're going to stick around, but the 3B especially. So you're going to be able to get lower previous generations of the Pi for much, much cheaper. And a lot of those cases and things like that are going to be going on discount. So keep an eye out for that as well. So there you have it. The Raspberry Pi 4B just launched. Great stuff. Let me know what you all think. That's what I think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll talk to you on the next one.